if your marriage is not working out, don't just separate with no plans of getting back together again and think that you'll just ride it out until the immigration interview. Once you get to the I-751 interview, you either need to be fully married with both spouses there, fully divorced with a final divorce certificate, or have substantial evidence of like battery or abuse. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I've done a couple videos about removing conditions on permanent residency by filing form I-751. And for those of you who aren't really familiar with this, I-751 is a form that you will need to file if you got your green card through marriage to a US citizen and your marriage was less than two years old on the date that you became a permanent resident. Your green card will have a two year expiration date on it. And we kind of refer to this as a conditional green card because before the two years are up, you'll need to file this form, the I-751, to remove the conditions on the green card. And there are several ways to file this form. And uh, what I'm gonna do is tell you guys a little story about an experience that I had this week by attending a USCIS interview for a woman whose I-751 petition was being decided by a USCIS officer. For those of you who aren't familiar with the I-751, there are several ways that you can file it to remove the conditions on your green card. The most common way is to file it jointly with your US citizen spouse by saying, hey, we are still married, still in a good faith marriage, uh, here is our form and evidence from the last two years that we are still married. The purpose of this form and the conditional residency process actually is to make sure that you don't engage in a fraudulent marriage. But that's not the only way you can file an I-751. You can also file it at any time if you end up divorcing your US citizen spouse by showing that when you entered the marriage, it was entered into in good faith, but it didn't work out and has resulted in a final divorce order. Uh, you can also file the I-751 if you've been battered or subject to extreme cruelty. Let's just call all of that being abused. So with that in mind, let's get into the story. My client married her US citizen spouse a few years ago and was living with him and got her conditional green card. Um, but after getting the conditional green card, their marriage really started going downhill. He was manipulative, somewhat abusive, but it didn't rise to the level of being totally physically abusive, which is pretty much what we would need uh, if we wanted to allege extreme cruelty uh, or battery in this type of situation. Um, and so she stopped living with him. Uh, and they separated maybe a year ago. And they, she filed an I-751 initially jointly with her US citizen spouse. And she came to me about a week ago and said, I have my I-751 interview next week. Will you go with me and represent me? Um, and I started talking to her and learned that there's a good chance her US citizen spouse wasn't going to show up. He was playing games with her, asking her for stuff, uh, and trying to force her to do stuff in exchange for him attending the interview with her. And it was just a risky situation. It was clear that he was being manipulative. It was clear that he was uh, taking advantage of her and that they weren't any longer in a good faith marriage. So I asked her, I'm like, okay, so do you wanna stay in a marriage with your US citizen spouse? because you can get divorced and we can still remove your conditions if you get divorced. And she said, yeah, I know that. I watched one of your YouTube videos, which is why I'm here consulting with you about this topic. I feel like you made that video exactly about my situation. What should I do? And so ultimately she decided she doesn't want to stay married with him. Um, and this created a little bit of a problem down the road when we got to the USCIS interview, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, but back to the story, I told her, okay, before we go to the USCIS interview, I want you to show me that you have filed for divorce because I wanna bring evidence to the interview that we have filed for divorce. 
Um, and the USCIS officer might, if we get lucky, reschedule the interview and give you time to get a final divorce certificate. Now I'm gonna pause the story for a second here and repeat a concept I've explained in another video. Once you get to the I-751 interview, you either need to be fully married with both spouses there, fully divorced with a final divorce certificate, or have substantial evidence of like battery or abuse uh, or extreme cruelty, which, which is a high burden. It needs to be more than just verbal abuse, generally speaking. We didn't have a US citizen spouse attending the interview with us, so we weren't fully married. We weren't fully divorced. We just had filed a divorce certificate, a divorce petition, and there wasn't enough evidence of abuse. There was a little bit, but not really enough to rise to the level of extreme cruelty. So anyway, it's the day before the interview. We prepare everything. I amend an I-751 petition based on divorce and cruelty uh, abuse. And my plan is to show these to the officer, to show him that a divorce is pending and to pretty much beg or politely ask for the interview to be rescheduled, to allow us time to finalize the divorce. Because I knew the officer wouldn't really have the power to make a decision unless, we're, unless both spouses are there and are fully married or we have a final divorce certificate in this situation. Um, it also turned out that she and her spouse were living together in New York. And she, when they separated, she moved to New Jersey. So right before the interview, the day before, I submitted a change of address form, changing her case, uh, her address from New York to New Jersey. Anyway, we get to the interview. It's just me and her. Uh, the US citizen spouse is still playing games and saying, yeah, I might show up if I feel like it. You'll have to wait and see. But we assume he's not gonna show up. And at this point, I don't even want him to show up because he's unstable and might just throw a wrench in it. We get to the interview and we're speaking with the immigration officer who was very nice and accommodating. And I explained the situation to him. And he said, well, I've looked at the evidence that was submitted to show this is a good faith marriage. If the US citizen spouse just showed up, I would instantly approve this because it's clear to me that this was a good faith marriage. But now that he's not here, I have to deny this petition because there isn't a final divorce certificate and my hands are tied. And after some back and forth with him, uh, I, I asked him, I'm like, well, we submitted a change of address form for New Jersey. Couldn't you just transfer this case to New Jersey, which will probably take a year before we are re-interviewed at the USCIS office in New Jersey. And he said, oh yeah, I can do that. I'll do that for you guys. So he really helped us out. He didn't deny the I-751, transferred it to New Jersey, which gave us enough time now to get a final divorce certificate. Hopefully within the next six months, we'll have a final divorce certificate. And in a year or so, we will go to the interview in New Jersey and the officer will be able to approve the petition since we have a final divorce certificate. My plan at this interview, my plan A anyway, because this was a fluid situation and we weren't exactly sure what was gonna happen, was to get a continuance, a basically a postponement, rescheduled interview um, and ultimately we ended up getting that but my plan b was okay there is a good chance he would deny this i-751 but it's okay because we are actually able to immediately refile the i-751 based on divorce that's what we would have done had he denied the petition um, it wasn't an ideal situation to refile it because you would have to repay the $680 filing fee and she also needed to travel outside of the US in the next few weeks and that would become substantially more complicated or possibly impossible if the I-751 got denied because she wouldn't really have status and might be denied re-entry if she tries to travel without a new I-751 pending. So how does this apply to you? Um, I've said this before and I'll say it again. 
if your marriage is not working out, don't just separate with no plans of getting back together again and think that you'll just ride it out until the immigration interview. That's a terrible idea. You're gonna get to the interview and the officer is gonna see that you guys have been distant, you haven't been living together for a long time. I mean, it might work, but it's a risky plan. And it might look like you're in a fake marriage, even though your marriage was real from the beginning. I would way rather, uh, in this situation with my client, what I would have liked was if she had come to me six months before and said, we haven't been living together, my husband's unstable, what are my options? And if we had started the divorce then, then now she would have her full unconditional green card. It would have gotten approved right at the USCIS interview. So your one takeaway should be, don't just live separated with no plan to get back together again, hoping to ride it out for immigration. You should either be fully married or fully divorced if an I-751 interview is scheduled. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I just thought I would share that experience. Maybe somebody will get something out of it, especially if your marriage isn't working out and you're a conditional resident. If you are in that situation and you need to speak with a lawyer, please feel free to consult with me. We'll create a plan. And if you are interested, I will represent you in the whole process until you become a full, unconditional permanent resident. If you're new to my channel, be sure to like and subscribe. I put out a new immigration related video on a weekly basis, largely focused on family based immigration. And I'll see you guys next week for another video. Thank you.